Hey, what is up everybody? Welcome back to House Wolf Art Gaming. So today for our little reaction video, we've got five ways gamers are holding back the games they love. This is from Cracked, and apparently, um, one of my friends said that this would definitely offend me because I'm a gamer. I've been gaming since I was like three or four years old. Yeah, and um, yeah, he said this would be a good thing to react to. So yeah, let's get into it anyway. Hey America! I'm from Australia. And I'm currently in Australia. So, no, not high America. I'm crack senior editor Josh Sargent, and I'm here to talk about video games. Specifically to say that we let them down, guys. They were supposed to be the future. Interactive storytelling was supposed to surpass movies as the new art form of a new generation, but we won't let it. We're holding them back. Uh, I don't really think we're laying them down, and I think that uh, games sort of have surpassed, surpassed movies at this point. I mean, it's more... I see conversations a lot more about games than movies. I mean, I haven't even had a conversation about a movie in months. So I think that even for it's some people, it has kind of surpassed movies a bit. So I'm just saying, I'd rather have an interactive story than just a story where I can just watch, even though it could still be cool. Because you can't admit that the level of violence in video games is smearing banana paste on your chest and calling yourself the king of France insane. Look, game bros and game ladies, I don't think violence in video games is a bad thing. I just think it's weird that it's the only thing. No, it's not the only thing. What what do you call the art? Well, I guess I still have violence in it. But what do you call the story? What do you call, like, the amount of characters there are? What do you call bloody sports sport um games like FIFA? Not a lot of violence in that. Can't really count rugby because there's a little bit of violence. I mean, you're bloody fight. You're, like, shoving into people. You're bloody charging into people. And I play rugby as a spare time, so I think I know. And plus there's like Forza Horizon or all the other Forza racing car games that don't feature violence. So kind of wrong on that bit. Four of the five best selling games of 2015 are just about killing people. I just want to point out that Star Wars is a, was a movie before a game. Just making that a thing. And when I say about, I mean the reason we play these games is so we can pretend to kill people. With guns, specifically. Because we don't want any innovation getting between us and scratching our murder itch. Wait, murder itch? Is he saying they will have an itch for murder and we can only satisfy it in video games because we don't want to get locked up? Oh my fucking god. Ugh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. There was something wrong with this guy. No, it's not because we have a murder itch. It's because it's fun to play. I'm not going to play a video game and then suddenly think, You know what? I'm going to grab my 12-gauge shotgun and shoot somebody random in the street. Ugh. One Twitter user pointed out that at the 2016 E3 Gaming Expo, 89% of the games shown were about solving problems with violent retribution. And people lost their shit at him just for saying that. Why? He's literally doing math. That's gaming. If anybody watching isn't a games folk, and if so, rude. I want to point out that games can do a lot of stuff that isn't murder. There's The Sims. There's Minecraft. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, weedy little bitch. I mean, they're like Sims. You can kill your own Sims with fire if you wanted to. And in Minecraft, you do kill. That's one of the main things you do at night time. Or if you want to spawn a monster in, but and they don't die by fire first. Still, it's a thing to kill. <laughs> God. But we gamers still choose to spend our gaming dollar almost exclusively on recreations of the most f***ed up shit we see in the news. You make it sound so wrong. It's not like we did a whole rec recreation, recreational game about 9-11 or something. It's not like we did something like that. We're just making a game that's about a gang war, not specifically about a anyone, just a made-up imaginary story of a gang war and just having it out, having a really good story and having some really good action scenes. It's really no different from a movie. Now look, I enjoy casual violence as much as I enjoy cigarettes or toilet hooch, but of course it's weird. When we pretend it doesn't look weird, that just makes us look more weird. And enjoying violence in movies isn't? 
Compare these games to the top five highest grossing movies of 2015. It's still mostly violence, but at least it's different kinds of violence. We have laser sword fights, dinosaur fights, car and gun fights, superhero fights, and I didn't see minions, but I assume there's some graphic torture or something. When you meet different types of violence, I mean, there's a couple of things in there that are incorporated with video game violence, like that Star Wars laser fight things. That was in Star Wars Battlefront, one of the main games you listed earlier on, the top five sold or whatever it was. And also, guns and car fights. That's GTA in a nutshell. That is GTA. <laughs> My freaking god. Oh god, you're so autistic. <laughs> I get it though. This is a sensitive topic for a lot of people because we remember a time when people were trying to make video games not a thing anymore. In the 90s, there was serious discussion about whether or not games were causing all the problems in the world and needed to be banned forever. Or at least it seemed that way to us because we were kids and didn't realize that these kinds of controversies happen like once a decade and always end up being as ephemeral and meaningless as, say, Piers Morgan. But today, we spend $25 billion a year on video games. 25 billion, that's four times more than we spend on guns and look at how powerful the gun industry is. And that's a bad thing? That's uh, a more passive way to show violence like just playing video games and you're not actually hurting anyone by playing video games instead of just going down the street and buying an AK-47 is that so bad? We're an important part of the economy now. No, 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 no. Not we. Me and all the other true gamers out there that enjoy games no matter what. We enjoy games with a good story. We enjoy games that actually have good violence. Like good action, sorry. You are not part of this equation. You're trying to stop action-related games. So at the risk of sounding cynical, even if scientists wearing lab coats and speaking in European accents conclusively proved that video games caused real-world violence, they probably still wouldn't take them away. Because gaming is expensive enough now to be a rich people hobby, and rich people hobbies can be literally anything. We're safe. Who cares? So let's just go full punk rock and admit that gaming is super f***ed. They can't prove it, though. That's the thing. Plus, I'm pretty sure if it was the cause of all this violence, they would take it away. If it was really the cause, which it will never will, it never will be, they would take it away. And plus, it's a very hypothetical assumption, so not a lot of definite definites there, you know. Plus, just in the in the real world now, where there's no hypotheses right now, video games aren't causing violence. People with fucked up minds are. All right. The anger thing probably isn't a coincidence. Already, I know that some of you are questioning whether I'm a true gamesman. So let me be clear here and say that my gamer cred is un impeachable. When I learned the true meaning of loyalty and friendship, it wasn't because some friends and I discovered a dead body in the woods, it was from Minsk in Baldur's Gate Go and his unwavering devotion to Go boo the miniature the giant space ah! hamster. So step on. Congratulations, you learned loyalty from playing a game. That's one thing, and that's one little tiny thing that I've learned when I was four years old. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot more things I can list off the top of my head that include stuff that I've learned from video games and being a true gamer. And yet, despite this obvious pedigree, I still don't like to call myself a gamer. Then why'd you say your gamer credit was on peak if you're not really a gamer? That makes no sense. Please, make sense. Because that word seems less associated with video games and more associated with being a dick on the internet. Then in your own definition, you would be a gamer because you are being a dick on the internet. In fact, Google literally auto-completes the word gamer to Gamergate, which was an internet harassment campaign with ties to white supremacy groups. So just searching for my hobby on the internet puts me three clicks away from being on yet another government watch list. Maybe because it's a popular thing to look up? I can also tell you anecdotally that writing about video games attracts way more internet hate than writing about anything else. Compare the comments under a This Movie is Sexist article to the This Video Game is Sexist article on literally any website, and you'll see the difference. Also, everybody knows this. Even Reddit. Meh, I can think of topics besides video games that would get a lot of discussion. Like, say, terrorist attacks. That includes, like, basically, whole Western world. Actually, the whole world. The whole world? Yeah, the whole world. Basically, because all this murder is happening in real life, I think that would get a lot more discussions than bloody a little bit of a game gone wrong. Alright? I think that would get a lot more discussion. I'm just saying. At a certain point, that's not a coincidence. And that certain point was six f***ing years ago when people started advertising to us using our inability to control our temper as their gimmick. Anyway, games. Mostly about killing. Gamers. Mostly mad all the time. Maybe a link. Not a crazy idea. Okay, playing video games can be annoying and stressful, but then so can watch 
like a TV series. Like when I watched Game of Thrones for the first time, and I saw like bloody Bran get handicapped, I was a uh, frustrated and annoyed. I want Cersei and bloody I forget his name now. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Lannister to die, and then when Ned Stark died, I was infuriated. I was like, "How dare they kill off such a great character?" And then Rob Stark died, and you can imagine how I felt after that. I was like, basically angry. So why don't we ban all the bloody hobbies that we love because they make us angry? So here's our opportunity to be better than most professional sports and tackle an obvious problem head on before anybody gets hurt. We don't actually care about story. Wait, wait, say that again. We don't actually care about story. No, no, no. Go again. We don't actually care about story. Okay, one more time. I think I'm starting to get it. We don't actually care about story. Okay, I did hear it right. I've read hundreds, probably, of articles about why video game stories are so bad. Why, the articles ask. Why are they so bad? Video game stories are some of the most amazing things of all time. I mean, the Halo franchise has a good story. Titanfall 2 had an excellent story. Uh, freaking All the Telltale games had good stories. And also, Shadow of Mordor was a really, really good story. And, uh, yeah, that's all I can list off the top of my head. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Yeah, those ones were really good too. And just because it's an article does not mean that it's correct. You know, some people are like you, which I'm really concerned about because they're breeding. God. I'll tell you, it's because we gamers, you and me. Again, you are not a gamer. I am. And I actually like games. So, again, I'm the gamer. You're not. Do not. Do not categorize yourself like me. Because you are nothing like me. You're not even the size of me. Don't give a f Die. It's not why we play, and it never has been, and it never will be. The stories don't matter to us. Well, the fans of Destiny did seem to care an awful lot. And the story did kind of matter to them, because they did kind of ask 343, three, three, I say ask very lightly, to thoroughly uh, demand... A story so they added a DLC in and then the fans were like okay we like it now see that's the that's the difference between Halo players nowadays and boy Bungie slaves because Bungie slaves when uh, the Halo in Halo 5 for example they did fan service right the company did put all these things that the fan, fans asked for and then the Bungie slaves are just like this should have been in from the start and then they move over to Destiny because it was made by Bungie and a Bungie combined with Activision is kind of disgusting and uh, yeah and then they basically they do the same thing with the DLCs and they just go yeah this is great thank you for listening to fans I went off track but I'm sorry I just need to vent that as soon as I thought about it now games have good stories Last of Us has a cool story and if you watch all the cutscenes on YouTube it's a pretty good movie no video game cutscenes that are combined into a movie would not make a very good movie because in, because in a lot of bits you would have no idea what's going on, so kind of a redundant thing to say. In fact, you could make the argument that that's the best way to enjoy The Last of Us' story. Want proof? I'm making that argument right now. You just got told, welcome to the internet, I am your god. Well, just like religion, you haven't been very factual so far, so that kind of fits the title very well, but then again, what is a god to a non-believer? I'm the non-believer here. You are no god. Anyway, I gotta spoil this game for you. You spend most of The Last of Us as a big tough man named Joel protecting Ellie, a young girl. At the end, you find out that the only way to cure the world's zombie problem is to kill Ellie. But Joel can't let that happen, and he kills a bunch of scientists, escapes with Ellie, and lies to her about what happened. Yeah, but that ending was kind of trash, though. I mean, seriously, if there's like a whole cure to a zombie apocalypse and you have to kill one little girl, I think a lot of us would do that in a heartbeat. For the ending to work emotionally, like as a story, you have to believe that Joel sees Ellie as vulnerable and feels a responsibility to protect her. And yet, she's invincible during the entire game. No, she isn't. She can be grabbed, and if you don't save her in time, she dies. And also that part with the car where the zombie's attacking her, she will die if you don't help her. Yeah, there's a bunch of moments where Ellie can die. Plus, she plays Ellie in the ending, and she can die, obviously, as well, so... Again, you're not being factual at all. She can't get hurt or even seen by enemies because if they could see her, the whole game would have been a huge pain in the ass. That's kind of why they did it, so the, that wouldn't ruin the game because then it would be so irritating that people would not want to play it anymore. Plus, when you think about it, they're going to go for Joel first because he's the guy with all the guns and everything. Ellie's just 
to the, to them is just a kid. It's just a kid. She won't do too much. But that guy with the gun surely will. So it's sort of common sense for them to go after go after Joel. But then again, it would make more sense for them to hold her hostage and make and tell him, Hey, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Just surrender. Yeah, that make that makes the most sense in their situation. So a game can't compromise the fun for the sake of the story, even when the game's main appeal is the story. Why? Because we just want to beat people to death with a baseball bat. No, like I just said earlier, because it will be irritating, yada yada yada. Plus, if she w if she does get she does get grabbed, but if she were to get grabbed and was in danger or something, you would still have to bash the guy's skull into um you know save her. So really, you're still killing either way. Like either way, you're still killing. So again, another redundant argu redundant argument. Again, no judgment because that's awesome, but that's still why we're playing. And the thing is, if we don't like a game's story that gets in the way of the gameplay, that means we don't actually care if games are art or not. You. What? No, 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 no. So much no. I'm leaving. What are you doing? We need you to finish, man. Listen, there's a whole world out there that's full of life. I'm not gonna waste it with guns like this. Come on, please, man, you need to do this. Okay, if I do have to do this, can I please request a noose and that ceiling fan at the end of the video? No, you can't. No. Look, you do this or you have to play Infinite Warfare. No, that's worse. I'm gonna keep playing it. <sighs> Remember when Roger Ebert said that video games could never be art? We got all mad for that stupid old man because he doesn't even play video games. And then remember how we spent the next decade doing nothing to prove him wrong? Well, see you, everyone. Yes, video games can be art, and there are a ton of incredibly talented artists working in the industry, but we don't care. Art is literally everything in a game. Every thing besides words is art. Without it, it would only consist of words. You make me want to die. <laughs> How dare you say that we don't care about the art in video games. So much time and effort goes through to make all the beautiful, stunning graphics we see. It's everything in the game. And you saying that just insults the greatest game developers of all time. Halo has some of the best graphics I've ever seen. Fallout 4 has some of the best graphics I've ever seen. And all bunch of other games that are too long to list. You make me sick. You literally make me sick of saying all these things that's saying bullshit, saying that we don't care about the story. So much time goes into creating that story, and so much time goes into making the, these art. You are despicable. And when we pretend to, we sound like a teenager explaining that watermelon vodka is actually good liquor. I don't get it. If that's supposed to be a joke, you're not being very funny because, I mean, I don't even think I've heard of watermelon f watermelon flavored liquor. It might taste good. I like watermelon. When I grow up, I might like watermelon vodka as well. So, plus it's also kind of redundant because, again, everything that look, all the visuals are because of art. All of them except for words. It's all because of art. And I'm pretty sure that we can have liquor without a waterburn flavored vodka, but we cannot have a game without art. We cannot. It's impossible. Look, maybe Destiny has a rich and evocative mythology, but that's not what keeps people signing in every week. They're just doing that to get their fat loot so they can fight the tougher monster, and that, my friends, Oh, look at that. That's exactly the game I was talking about earlier. They got so much criticism for not having a story that players said, hey, we need a story to keep to make this interesting. <sighs> you are disgusting. 
That's the designer putting us in a Skinner box and getting us addicted to simulated accomplishments. I'm not sure what emotional truth you can get out of spending all day leveling up, but I do know that almost every video game review I've ever read has talked about whether the game hooks you and its replay value. Look, if we really cared about art, we wouldn't have reacted to Mass Effect 3's ending by demanding that they patch it in a way that lets us fulfill our power fantasy. Okay, this is the last time I'm ever gonna say this, say this again, because I feel like I'm gonna say it every time I stop this and try to explain. But again, every single visual thing comes from art, so we do care about the art. It's not the art that made us want to patch Mass Effect 3's ending, because the ending was so bad! All the choices that you did, and all the things that you did before, felt useless! They felt redundant because of the new, like, the ending! You, um, how was it again? Like, you die in the ending? Or, or like, you feel so helpless and then you have to do this sacrifice. Everything just felt like for nothing. It was all for nothing. That's why we wanted to patch it. And we wouldn't have created a petition to get a review of Uncharted 4 removed because we disagreed with it. I... what? How does having a review and then wanting to take it down, how does that count as not caring for the art? We pro we disagree with what they said, so we want to take it down because it was the was, review was just so bad and so untrue. At least that's why I assume it, why they would take it down. But like, what does it have to do with the art? What does it have to do with it? It's just the review we want taken down. It's just the review. You're an idiot. Just stop. Because a big part of art is personal interpretation, not consensus. Demanding consensus is actually one of the most anti-art things you can do. So if being fun and distracting is all it takes for something to count as art, then Jerry Springer counts as art, and professional wrestling, and <laughs> making list-based comedy videos for the internet. Really? Because all you seem to have done is prove your, how low your IQ is, and I haven't laughed at all. Well, except for the part for your stupidity. So. Yeah, you're making people laugh at you, not with you, though. And just as an aside, Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima also thinks that games aren't art. Well, Kojima can't really make up his mind because in another article he said of how, you know, video games were art. And then in the other article he said, yeah, video games were not. So he's kind of two-sided here. So not really a good example. And he's the guy who allowed me to create the most beautiful moment I have ever seen on a TV screen. <laughs> Video games are not relaxing. Well, what the fuck is this? That and just playing a really little relaxing game that's not has nothing to do with competitiveness, nothing to do on just a relaxing video game like playing one of the a couple of the Halo missions on easy because you're just sitting there, you're just playing, or even on normal, normal's not that hard either. You're just playing, and you're enjoying the story, and you're just relaxing like you're watching a movie. When you talk to people about video games and bring up the stuff I've brought up, the violence, the lack of attention to story, the argument often becomes that they are a stress reliever. They're relaxing. You feel pent up rage and then you play video games and you feel relaxed. The truth is, that's not how anger, stress relief, or relaxation work. When you indulge in a violent video game fantasy, you're stimulating your brain, but not your body, in such a way that it not only exacerbates the frustration and anger, but associates frustration and anger with aggression in a way that is unhealthy in the long term because aggression is unhealthy. Look. I know the research is conflicted. And yes, I know who Craig Anderson and Christopher Ferguson are. If you don't, Google it, it's boring. But if you put that aside, then you already know the truth. So let's just be honest. Games can be exciting and exhilarating and infuriating, but they're not relaxing. None of us have ever drifted off to sleep playing Mario. We may have passed out face down on our keyboard playing EverQuest, but it's kind of different. Games are designed to be addictive. We sound like f***ing junkies when we say we find them relaxing, that they relieve our stress. Like we just need a hit of Call of Duty to take the edge off. Um, people have passed fell asleep playing video games. I've done that before. My friends have done that before. A lot of people have done that before because we're playing late at night and then we just get tired and then we fall asleep. Yeah, I played it. I did it one time where I was playing... What game was it? One of the Call of Duty campaigns. Like, some of the campaigns are just so boring. And it's just like, you're playing it and then it's like, I'm drifting to sleep. It was like one of the really bad Call of Duties. I think it was like... What mission was it? What one was it? It was like one mission in one of the Black Ops games. I can't remember what it was. It was like three or something, because I was not immersed in that at all. I was waiting just for like something relatable to the 
prequels to show up, but I was just bored. I was just sitting there. I'm, I fell asleep. I fell asleep on my couch. I couldn't take it. So, yeah. Yeah, video games can be a good stress reliever, and it could be in a way that you're relaxing, because, again, you're sitting down, you're playing a game, and it's just like, oh, the stress is gone. I feel much better now. And then, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so sometimes it can be relaxing, sometimes it can't. It definitely can be relaxing, though, as I proved just earlier. So let's be honest. There's nothing wrong with saying that you play them for fun. There's nothing wrong with saying that we're, like, ripping a demon's head in half because we're broken inside. Really? Because you're trying so hard in the stupidest way possible to convince us that it is bad. That there was something wrong with it. Plus, that cigarette, I could already... I could already think of when you've pulled that bloody cigarette box out. You need to be better, have better timing with your jokes. Seriously, that was just boring. I was just like, no, oh, he's gonna make that boy addiction joke where he contradicts himself again, isn't he? So, yeah. Jokes are bad. Your points are shit. That's basically it. I mean, it's better than admitting we're addicted to something. Yeah, I don't think I need to say any more about this. So, yeah. That's it for this video, guys. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.